Have you ever wondered and uh, asked yourself what are the steps or the order of salvation for me to be saved? What are those steps that I need to take or the order of salvation? We have to understand that God is a God of order. And uh, this one is well explained. Even as uh, Luke was writing the book of Luke, he had to have order. Okay, see Luke in one uh, one three. It says it seems it seemed good to me also having a perfect understanding of all things from the very first to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus. So um, the book of Luke was written um, by. Uh, Luke the evangelist and I think uh, according to what the introduction says here he was writing to some guy called Theophilus nobody really knows much who Theophilus was but I believe it was uh, some uh, it, it, it was maybe some political figure or something who wanted to know about the life of Christ so he had to write in order because without order you cannot be able to push anything God loves order. And also we see this one in 1 Corinthians uh, 14, verse uh, 40. We see order also, which is really, really important. Let all, thi let all things be done decently and in order. Okay? So there must be order in whatever you're doing. And when uh, we see people doing things without that kind of order, we ask ourselves, are they really doing it the way the Bible tells us? Because we, the Bible tells us to do things in order, okay? Order. Especially things which are wanting. You see, like uh, salvation is something that uh, is really wanting. And uh, we need to put that order so that we can be able to know that we are doing it in the right way. See, the book of Titus 1.5, it says, For this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting and ordain elders in every city as I had appointed thee. So there are some things which are really wanting and the things which are wanting, they need to be in order, in order. So now let's see, let's see what kind of this order are we talking about. The apostle uh, Lucas told us about this kind of order. And he has told us even when he was writing his books, he was making sure that he follows some order. So let's ask ourselves, what kind of order do we need? What kind of order do we need? Okay. The Bible tells us, let all things be done in order. So what order is this for us to be saved? Before we are saved, what order do we need to have? Now, first, Let's see what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians uh, 4, verses 3. It tells us something here. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Are you seeing the point here? If the gospel is hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Why? In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. The gospel is hid to those who are lost. So first, we have to realize that we are lost. Before we can say that we need salvation, you have to realize you are lost in need of a savior. You are in need of a savior because you're lost. Because remember something, if you know you're lost, then there's someone who has come to find those who are lost like you. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost, Luke 19.10. Are you the one who is lost? Have you discovered that you're lost? You know, you can't be saved until you realize that you're a sinner and you're lost. And you realize that you are a sinner. That's the most important thing. How can you be saved and you don't need a savior? How can you be saved and you don't need a savior? Look at the Bible in Romans 3.23. For all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. All have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. Have you sinned? Do you understand that you're a sinner? You are lost? And that you're not righteous. You see there are people who think, oh no, I think I'm righteous. Let me show you, you're not righteous. 
as it is written na, there is none righteous no not one so you understand that you're not righteous you're a sinner okay and uh, you understand that through adam you know some people can say oh but uh, keith how how am i sinner i've done nothing wrong the bible tells us through adam we have all sinned because he's our father Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world. Who was that man? Adam. And death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. You see, from Adam, being our father, and he bore children and other children, and all children were born in the image of Adam. Let me show you. It's very true. You are born in the image of Adam, not in the image of God, until you accept God. See, and and uh, Genesis 5.3 says, And Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness after his image and called him Seth. You see, Adam is getting a son in his own likeness. The likeness of what? Sin. After his image, the image of what? Sin. A sinful man. And this one has been passed to all of us. All of us, each and every one of us has this kind of image of sin. Okay? And uh, we can't get to heaven by our own righteousness. We can't say, oh, I will, I will do good then I go to heaven. No. The Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah 64, verse 6, it tells us something here. But we are all as an unclean thing. And all our righteousness are as filthy rags and we all do fade as a leaf and our iniquities like the wind and have taken us away you see our kind of righteousness if we try to say i will do good i will give to the poor i will not sin i will not do this god is saying all that you're trying to do is as filthy rags is as filthy rags my friends have you seen that you're a sinner that is the first step, the first order. Before you get saved, you have to understand that I am a sinner in need of a savior. So what's the next thing that you need to do? You need to hear the gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel is the good news. You need to hear the gospel. Okay? Now, if there is a bad news, which I've just talked about, so what is the good news? Now, let me tell you, my friends, the good news, okay, is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. This is the good news, okay? Now, listen to this. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, the gospel. This is the Apostle Paul telling people, guys, I'm giving you the good news, which I preached unto you, which also you received and wherein you stand which I preached unto you, because Paul was preaching this gospel over and over. And the people received this gospel by faith. We received the gospel by faith. And we stand in this gospel. We don't stand on our good, righteous deeds. We don't stand on what we have done. We don't stand on what we are able to do for God. We don't stand on baptism or anything else. We stand on this gospel, this good news. By which also you're saved. You see, my friends, this is the gospel which saves you. You're saved by this gospel. If you do what? If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. Now, why is Paul telling us to keep this gospel in memory? Because unless you keep it in memory, you can never be saved. So how do we keep it in memory? By understanding. You see, the, 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 the Pharisees did not understand the Torah. They did not understand the law. That's why they killed Jesus, whom they have been preaching every day. And the, that's why when you were in school, your teacher used to tell you, don't cram that formula. Please understand it so that it can stay in your memory. That's exactly what you need to do to understand this gospel. Verse Three, for I delivered unto you first that which I also received. Paul tells us, I'm not giving you something which I've calibrated. It's what I received. And we understand where he received this gospel. For 
14 years, Paul was in the deserts of Arabia and Jesus taught him this gospel and he told us in the book of Galatians, Galatians uh, 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 chapter 1 verse 11 to 12 he told us that this gospel which is preached of me is not after man but I received it by a revelation from Jesus Christ so Paul is telling us this is what I received and there is a beautiful word here which you have to see how 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 that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. How did Jesus die? Jesus died by shedding his blood for us. Because without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. The blood is really important for salvation. So Paul is telling us, he's telling us this gospel is all about how Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. This is the gospel which you need to hear, my friends. You need to hear what Jesus did for you. Okay? Now, we are hearing the gospel. And uh, remember, this gospel, you cannot just hear it from the blues. You cannot just hear it from nowhere. Because the Bible tells us something here. Romans 10 verses 4. The Bible tells us in Romans 10 verse 4. Uh, okay. Ah, sorry, 14. Romans 10 verse 14. Sorry. It's concerning hearing. The Bible says, how then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? How will you say, Jesus saved me, and you have not even believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Are you seeing? You need to have a preacher like Paul who told us, follow me and listen to me because what I'm giving you, I was given by Jesus. You have to hear from a preacher. Are, are you seeing the point? And how shall they preach except they be sent? So Paul had to be sent by Jesus and told, this is the gospel. And then after that, he, 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 he told others and he told others, please do the same thing. Go and tell others about this gospel. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Are you seeing the point? So you must hear the gospel from a preacher who has been sent, not a preacher who has sent himself. Are you seeing the point here? Why do we need to hear? Why do we need to hear? The reason why we need to hear is this. Uh, Romans 10 verse 17 this is the main reason why you, you need to hear the gospel the bible tells us faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god are you seeing the point you need to hear you need to hear and then when you hear faith comes in when you start hearing are you seeing the point? But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily. Their sound went into all the earth and their words unto the ends of the world. You see, there are people preaching in the ends of the world, but people don't hear. They don't want to hear. And unless you hear, you can never have faith. You can never have faith. And you can never trust the gospel unless you hear. What, how can you trust what you have not heard? Because you need to hear so that you trust. Remember in Ephesians 1 verse 13, what it tells us. It says, in whom, in whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. You see, you need to trust after you hear the gospel of your salvation in no more so after that you believed you are sealed with that holy spirit of promise you see after you hear you trust and then you get the holy spirit 
which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession and to the praise of his glory. The Holy Spirit is coming as an assurance that we have our inheritance in heaven and we shall be redeemed. We shall be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye because the Holy Spirit is in us. And that Holy Spirit who quickened Jesus at the grave is going to quicken us because he is in us. Are you seeing the point here? Okay, now we have heard the gospel. Okay? Now, what is the next step? We need to understand the gospel. We need to understand. Unless you understand, you cannot be saved. You can hear, but you cannot understand. And that means you are not saved. But if you hear and you understand, then that means you are saved. Let me show you why understanding is really important. Let me show you. Let's go to the book of Matthew. Matthew, uh, Matthew 13, verse 13. And we can read to 15. See what Jesus was saying here. Jesus said, Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing, uh, because they seeing they not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. Why was Jesus speaking in parables? Because people they see, but they don't, they, they, they can see, and they can hear, but they cannot understand. Because understanding is a key principle for you to be saved. You can hear, but probably you have not even understood what you have heard. And that's why the sinner's prayer does not save. The sinner's prayer does not save. Because people just repeat some words, but they don't even understand what they are saying. Are you seeing the point here? And in, and, uh, and in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which says, By hearing they shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing you shall see, and not perceive. For these people's hearts is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have crossed, closed, and lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and uh, hear with their ears, and should understand. And you see, you understand from your heart and should be converted and I should heal them. The only way that you can be converted is if you understand from your heart, not from your mind. Are you seeing the point here? You understand from your heart, not from your mind. Are you seeing the point here? It's really, really important to understand this. Let's also look, look uh, in, the, in the book of Mark. The book of Mark 7, verse 14, it also tells us something concerning understanding. Understanding. See what the Bible says. And when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, Hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand. Come on. Why is Jesus telling people to understand? Because without understanding, you can never be converted. You need to understand so that you can be converted. Understanding is a key principle for you. You hear and then you understand. Let me show you also another verse. John, John 8, verse 43. John 8, 43. It tells us, Why do you not understand my speech? Can you see this? Jesus is telling these people, why can you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. How will you hear and then you say you have heard and then you have not understood? How can you claim to have heard the gospel and you have not understood it? How can you claim to believe the gospel which you have not understood? Are you seeing the point here, my friends? Matthew 15 verse 8 it tells us again these people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips but their heart is far from me you see there are people who can just say a sinner's prayer 
and they draw close to God with their lips, but their hearts are far. Why? Because they never understood what they were saying. And in vain they worship God, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. You say, this is how I found in our ministry. This is how I found in our religion. And you are worshipping in vain. These are the people which God says that on that day, on that day, that simple day, they will come saying, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy? Did we, we not worship you? And cast out demons and do all great white, mighty things. And he will tell them, depart from me, you that work at iniquity. I never knew you because you never understood. You just drew close to God by your lips, your mouth. But your heart was far from God. Are you seeing why it's really important to understand? Are you seeing this? It's really important to understand. Very, very important. Now, after you understand the gospel, then that's the time that you believe now. You believe, okay? Believing is a key thing. Believing is a key thing. Let me show you. Galatians 3, verse 22. You have to believe, okay? You have known that you're lost. You have heard the gospel. You have understood the gospel. Now you need to believe the gospel. Believe the gospel. See, but the scripture has concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ must be given to them that believe. You see, the only way that this promise, this promise of salvation can come to you is when you believe. It can't come to you unless you believe. You see? Are you seeing the point here? Galatians 3, 26. Let's just go down here. For you are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. How can you become saved? By faith. You believe. Are you seeing the point here? You believe. Believe that Jesus died for your sins. He was buried and rose again. And that way, you can become a child of God. Believe. Let me also show you something here. Romans 10, verses 4. Romans 10, verses 4. Okay? It says, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. Believes. Are you seeing the point? Christ is the end of the law. And now you become righteous when you believe the gospel. Believing is a key point, my friends. Okay? You have to believe. You have to believe. Okay? So now, <laughs> let me show you a couple of more verses. Mark, in the book of Mark 16, verse 14. Mark 16, 14. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not which had seen him after he was risen. You see, unless you believe, you still have the unbelief of the heart. Unless you believe, you can be saved. Believing is everything. Believing is everything. Look. Again, let me see. Let me show you here. Luke 24, 25. I want to show you why you need to believe. It's not anything that you do but believing. Then he said unto them, All fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. You're a fool if you don't believe what the prophets have spoken. If you don't believe the gospel. Believing is everything. Believing is everything everything are you are you seeing this are you seeing this let me show you what jesus told these people john john 14 verses 1 jesus said this let your heart be troubled you believe in god believe also in me when you believe in in Jesus, 
you will be saved. You will be saved. Are you seeing the point here? Let me show you something here. Romans 10 verses 8. Okay. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. Now, after you have believed, there's something that you need to do. Confess what you have believed. Now, you may be asking, why is confession important? Think about the thief at the cross. He believed that Jesus is the Son of God and was capable of being with him in paradise. If he could have kept quiet and not confessed and told Jesus, Jesus, when you get to paradise, remember me. Could Jesus have an answered and told him that today you'll be with me in paradise? No. Because confession is really important. After you believe from your heart, then confess what is in your heart. And tell Jesus, Jesus, this is what is in my heart. Jesus, this is what is in my heart. I'm confessing to you right now. And when you confess, then something happens. Let me show you here. That if you shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You see, confession is also important because if you go to a court of law and you confess what you don't know, then you're a liar. So first you have to believe and then you confess. Why? Romans 10.10 10, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. You see, from the heart you're believing for righteousness. But then with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You become righteous by believing, but you became saved by confessing what you believed. Are you seeing the point here? So it's really important for you to confess, to confess what you believed. Very, very important. And uh, my friends, this is the whole order of salvation. The whole order order of salvation step one you have to understand that you're lost step two you have to hear the good news the gospel when you understand that you're lost this is the bad news my friend i'm lost i'm deserving to go to hell then number two you hear the gospel the good news number three you understand the gospel how is it that this gospel is going to save me? You understand it. Then after you understand, you believe the gospel. And after you believe the gospel, you confess what you have believed. That's the order of salvation. And once you follow that order, you're saved, sealed, and sanctified unto the day of redemption. Thank you, guys. If you enjoyed these videos, please, you can uh, share to your friends. You can uh, like and subscribe. And as well, you can check on the description below where we have uh, a couple of other channels which you can also go and check and share to your friends. God bless you and have a good time.